<laughs> Welcome to Dudes of Hazards Radio. I'm your founder and host, Donnie McCarty. Today, I'm joined in studio by my co-host, Brad Nagley. And also, in the studio, we have my dad, Ron Nagley. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Ron? Glad to have you here, man. Yeah, this just a, a little nervous, so, um, you know, bear with me. Okay. Well, that's about you and every other first-time guest or I, basically listeners. He started with that radio voice, didn't he? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of was like, hey, great to be here. <laughs> You're a natural. Um, yeah, so why don't you guys go ahead and, I mean... And put the last names together. He says, your yeah. dad, go ahead and tell us what's going on here, guys. So, uh, yeah, I'm Brad Nagley. Ron's my father. Got him to join the league and getting him out there to do be more involved. He's showing up to events. He's uh, he's he's playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there. Uh, that's Yeah, that's about all I can say is I'm there. I had uh, I had used to play golf a lot. Um uh, Back before he was born, I was a five handicap and played nice. 34 times a week. Um, well, maybe, what happened? Maybe four or five times a week, <laughs> and then you happened is what happened. And, changed uh, things a little bit. Yeah, it, it kind of changed some things. And the last two years, I really haven't played much, but um, I made a decision about a month ago, a month and a half ago, that I was either going to start playing or I was just going to quit. Yeah. So um, trying to get out there and try to play and get involved. So. I, we're not going to let you quit, Ron. So, <laughs> so last week he was Monday. He did the men's league at uh, Crockett's Ridge. Yep. Yep. Then Thursday men's league at Blackthorn, uh -huh. and then played on the weekend. He played three times last week. Let's that's, go, Ron. That's a record. Yep. None of them were any good, but <laughs> who cares? Actually, I, I played uh, nine before men's league on Thursday out of Blackthorn, and I shot a thirty-nine in the back. That's slick. That was hey, good. I mean, I was all over. That's excellent. And that was with a double bogey. Wow. So a couple birds or just chucking away at pars there? Uh chucking away at pars. That's yep. excellent. Then. One birdie. That, I had one birdie. That that always helps. Yeah. There you go. Um yeah, I mean we'll talk a little bit about some of the events you've done and stuff, but it, it's been great seeing you out here this year at some stuff. I mean, thankfully, even though we didn't play a lot of golf last year, I still felt like we saw each other a decent amount from just functions over at your place or whatever it might be. So Yeah. Um Let's go ahead and jump into the podcast rundown, and we'll let you guys know what we're talking about today. All right, so first we're going to go over club notes, then we're going to kind of get into a background of uh, my dad, Ron. Um, then we're going to head into drinks with the dudes. It's always a good segment. And then uh, kind of going to dive deeper with an interview with uh, Ron. And then... Uh, course my favorite hazards time we're going to save it for the end we're going to say 10 minutes we're probably going to go for 20 or 30 you know how it is what yeah. is hazards time oh th that'll be your favorite segment by the time we get there you'll find out when you get there yeah it'll be a nice surprise at the end but okay. brad loves it so yes you know it's got to be good um so some club notes uh coming up in just a couple short days we have our first stableford shootout that's going to be may 6th and 7th at crockett ridge and elizabethan it's going to be a really fun format, playing the Stableford, no pressure, double bogey or worse. Who cares? Pick up, have a good time, get out there and chase those birdies and eagles. And for some of you that aren't that talented, maybe chase some pars. Uh, but ultimately, Easy that's now. going to be uh, – oh, wrong. that wasn't directed at you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just assume it was? Yeah, Pre man. pretty much, yeah. you got to remember, there's golfers that are way worse than you in, in our club here. So That's hard to believe. <clears throat> yeah, Max, well, it's true. Max Kelly. <laughs> Max Kelly. <laughs> Um, this event is for club points, so love to see you guys come out there and play. It's going to be a fun two-day event, and looking forward to seeing all of you guys. Yep. Uh, we got the Hazards Open. Um, June 3rd and 4th, Golf Club of Bristol. It's open to members and guests. It's going to be our first major of the year. Um, I'm going to try to defend. I'm, I mean, I have to. You have to. In, in you town, get... I got to. You got to. Yeah. That's going to be really fun. First major of the year. Uh, seeing if you can defend that title. Uh, that's that's going to be a lot of pressure, but, you know, we'll see how that game's shaping up. Yep. Last thing we want to go ahead and uh, cover real quick is our Crockett Ridge corporate membership. This is a great deal, guys. It's uh, $49. covers from the day you sign up till March 31st of next year. Basically, what you do, you pay us 49 bucks. That then gives you $10 off every 18 hole round that you play out at Crockett from now until then and four dollars off all your nine hole rounds also includes some food and beverage discounts and some merchandise discounts so 
good deal helping I'm, support the dudes. I'm not good at math, but I think but you got to play five, six times. To yeah, get your money back. Just you play five whole rounds in a nine hole. Start making your money back, and then what's really nice is it's a 15 percent off the the food and um, mm-hmm. beverage in there. So I mean that that never hurts. So it's a good little deal. A question. I wonder. Yeah. Uh, does that work in the uh, Monday Night League? Yeah. That so they have so because like I paid I played last night. I think it was like twenty seven dollars. Would I get? Yeah, you know, four dollars off yeah, that. Four dollars off mm-hmm. that. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's definitely a good deal. That's he's, a great deal. Sign up now. And then I'm doing that. You know, I've just been a little too busy to be out there for that. Yeah, but I'm signed up for that league. And I mean, yeah, I noticed you got zero points. Yeah, I got zero <laughs> points. Not because see, it's not because of talent. It's just unavailability. I thought it was because you sucked. But yeah. Okay. Well. All right. Well, good to know. <laughs> Fair enough. But that, that's not an so, outlandish ass, uh, assumption. So they said as the summer kind of gets and the days get longer, they're going to push back tea time. So I plan on making that on Mondays as well. Nice. Yeah. That's going to be a lot of fun. When I spoke with Jade, he had made a comment that uh, they're going to be pushing them back to like 630. For that's great. Nice. Yeah. That's that's almost going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. I mean, honestly, just this, with this being the beginning of our year, it's been a little too busy and with just miscellaneous things coming up. But I'm hoping in May and June to get out there and play quite a bit. Now, but, uh, question, Keith, is it Keith Kesterson? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's leading, I think. Um, yeah, he seems to be tearing it up and so, it every uh, week. So Dad went there for not this past, but last Monday. He goes, yeah, I played with a guy named Keith. And he had no idea he was in the dudes, anything about him. And it was I like, was going to talk to him about joining. <laughs> That would have like, been, that would have been awesome. I got scared, and I was like, oh, no, I won't say anything. <laughs> that would have been really great. So I don't know if you've ever heard of these guys. He's like, uh, I mean, actually, yeah. So Keith is going on the uh, Virginia trip, correct? Yes. Okay, and Jade as well. And Jade as yep. well. That would yep. Gr- be a good time. Have you played, met with uh, Greg Fawn yet? Mm, don't think no. so. Another no. dad that's going on the trip, so. Uh-huh. There'll be a couple of you guys that are a little older than the rest of us can mm-hmm. hang out, have your own special bedtime. You guys could have your, uh, special bedtime. Special bedtime. <laughs> are, are we going to go to dinner about five? Yeah. Five? Five? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and count on that. That's when we're on the golf course yeah, gonna... with no shoes. <laughs> no shoes. <laughs> Some no shirts. <laughs> the shoes got lost about 20 minutes before that. But yeah, let's go ahead and jump into our uh, guest background. Brad, why don't you go ahead and take the kind of lead on this and all right um uh, i like to start learning about someone where are you from uh, i mean i know but tell, the, tell everyone sure i'm pretty much from kentucky uh raised in kentucky i was born in madison wisconsin i think we moved when i was like two months old moved to Owensboro, kentucky moved to shelbyville kentucky where hugh's from shout out to hugh um and uh, pretty much raised in shelbyville kentucky graduated from the university of kentucky I uh, got a job up in Indianapolis, Indiana, where I went up there and met my wife, Tracy. And then I moved to Johnson City in 1990. Got married in 91. We are coming up on, what, 33 years of marriage? That's incredible. And um, just to let you all know, I will be 57 on Thursday. You know, if anybody wants to buy me anything or <laughs> a drink or, or whatever, so... What do we got going on Thursday? Yeah, I've got the... Uh, Jeremy's got the... the clinic. The, the clinic. clinic and stuff, and... You going to go to that? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I don't know what we've really got planned, if anything planned, but he said if I'd go, he'd get me a beer. So Okay. Well, there we go. You know. He's getting I'll, a beer. I'll get you. <laughs> oh, everybody gets a beer. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Ron's like, man, I'm, I'm so special. This is really great at this Jeremy guy. I know. I was going to go home and tell my wife, Jeremy's going to buy me a beer. Isn't that sweet? Oh, uh, man. Then Screw Jeremy. You're going to like Jeremy a little less as this podcast goes <laughs> yeah. on. So, um, he doesn't even remember seeing me out there at the brewery the other night. I wouldn't take that personal. I mean, here I was talking to him. I shared my life story with him and, and kind of opened up and cried to him, and he doesn't even remember it. <laughs> he should feel ashamed. Uh-oh. The So let's see. Favorite course you've played? Nothing fancy. Uh, in my job, I've gotten to travel around and play a lot of really, really nice courses, but the Virginian yeah. is my favorite golf course. It's probably been 10, 15 years since I've played it, and I've had opportunities to play. But uh, the Virginian is probably my favorite course. Don't know why, but it's just, I've always seemed to play well there, and I just really enjoy it. I've not played there, but I've heard nothing but great things about it, so it seems like a pretty solid choice to have. I'd be curious to see if it's the same if you went back and played it, because 15 years ago... I was decent. (laughs) You were a good golfer. I know. You're playing from the same tees. Who who taught you golf? Who got you into golf? Nobody. Uh, My mom... You know, Gigi uh, always played golf. Uh, Dad, my dad played some golf, but he he worked a lot. 
and uh, mom always played, and she was, you know, uh, I was raised at Shelbyville Country Club. Shout out to Hugh again. Uh, <laughs> that's his own course. And, um, you know, my parents would just drop me off at the country club, you know, cheap babysitting. They'd say, here's your golf clubs, here's your tennis racket, here's your swimsuit and a towel, and here's a dollar. Yeah, country club, <laughs> cheap babysitting. <laughs> <laughs> well, things know have changed. <laughs> yeah, th things have changed. Well, I, I remember you could get a candy bar for a dime, and you can get a pack of those nab crackers for a dime. She gave me a dollar. I set for the day, man. Jeez. Um, yeah, good. things have changed. Yeah, things have changed. Yeah. That's not the current case. So for those that don't know the connection, <clears throat> Hugh, my dad has a sister. Hugh is marrying her daughter. So that's the connection to mm -hmm. kind of Hugh and my family, Shelbyville, for those that haven't made that connection yet. But And um, Hugh, if you guys, you know, maybe some of you are just joined in listening. Yeah. He was episode one of season two. We had a podcast where he came on. He told us a little bit about the club, uh, Shelbyville, where he's – been playing at in that area and told us a little bit about that connection as well there yeah the thing i remember of shelbyville country club on hole number two there was a water tower to the right i'd say seven out of ten times i hit that water tower <laughs> and it's just so funny because <laughs> you're out on the golf course you can be on hole 17 on the other side of the almost the other side of the town you hear ding oh and it just echoes unmistakable sound oh yeah it's like you know what that was yep <laughs> nagley's playing two again <laughs> He's back at it. He's back at it. What's your best score? Even par. I shot even par one time out of Johnson City Country Club. That's excellent. And uh, came down to probably a two-foot putt, and I was scared to death. You would have thought that I was putting for $10 million just to try to hit that putt. Just a two-footer. Yep, mm. two-footer. And those bastards wouldn't give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> they said not today. <laughs> no. you're, you're finishing this one out. Yep. That's pretty crazy. Um, so you mentioned you used to play quite a bit, haven't played as much over the last little stretch, but kind of getting back into it. Why did the joining the dudes, do you feel like that's helped out a little bit, or was that more of a, if I'm going to play more, I'm going to join the dudes? How did, how did that kind of work out for you? Well, a little bit of both ways. Um, when I joined the dudes, you know, Justin had asked me to come out for, uh, I think it was the member guest that we had. Mm -hmm. was at Crockett's. Yeah. Crockett's Ridge. And I enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun. So I just went ahead and joined, but I didn't really play mm -hmm. or do much. And um, <clears throat> I guess I'll go into a story here, uh, but uh, I had gotten some golf clubs two years ago. Um, I'm a tightwad, don't like to, um, you know, buy expensive things for myself. I'll buy them for other people, but not for myself. A lot of dads are like that. Yep. And um, I had gotten some clubs. Well, everybody for Christmas gave me like a $200 gift card to club fitting or $100 or $300. So I took all the gift cards and I went out there and I, I got some clubs fit. And um, that was great, man. So I'm going to be a really good golfer because I have custom-made clubs. And my game went to pot. It really just tanked. And uh, I went to uh, Swing Lab not long ago and I was working with Kelly and he um, saw me uh, swing about three times, and he goes, you, you don't have a swing problem. He said, you've got a shaft problem. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, why are you playing extra stiff shafts? It's like, uh. You're like, I am. I, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I am. And he shows them to me. I said, is that what that means? He goes, yeah, that's what it means. And I was like, uh, should I not be? <laughs> He's like, no. I don't. I wouldn't have known the difference. Yeah. I, I didn't know anything. And he, he said, you know, are all your sharp shots short right? And I was like, yeah. I mean, I used to swing, you know, my 150-yard club is an 8-iron. And um, with these clubs, I'm swinging a 6-iron, and I'm being about 20 yards short. And I'm like, it's, it's just not fun. Yeah, no. I mean, it's just not fun. You know, Bradley, you know, everybody else has wedges in their hands or, or something like that. And I'm swinging a 6-iron and coming up short. So for the last two years, I pretty much just kind of said – Forget it. You know, when somebody would call and say, do you want to play? No, not really. Thanks. And um, ever since, you know, Kelly did that, I'm in the process of getting my clubs reshafted and um, looking forward to start playing. Here yep. comes that train. Here it comes. But uh, that, that, that's kind of what's got me into it. And the dudes is a, is a good way to uh, get involved. Good. To, it's uh, funny you mentioned that story. It's really funny you mentioned that story. Why is so, it? The question leading up to – I'm going to play you a little bit from our podcast. Uh-oh. And the question was – we asked Jeremy, who was your most improved? And then he answered that. And this next question was, who's your least improved <laughs> golfer from so the Dukes? I've set goals and I've achieved them, Brad. I would say it's either between Ron and Max. 
Oh, no, Max. <laughs> Jeremy. Yeah, into, I into Ron. Please give it to Ron because into Max Ron. just gets so much shit. It's to Ron's defense. He was playing with like an X100 shaft. He had no idea he's been yeah, okay, playing with. Okay, so yeah, we had no idea. But So my dad got cousin fit for clubs, right? He's, I mean, he's he's in his 50s. Doesn't have the swing speed he once did. And he got custom fit like a year and a half ago. And I never looked at his clubs, really, what he got custom fit for. He's playing with weighted 120-gram extra shift shafts. Well, who fit him? Mickey from Rocky? <laughs> <laughs> Swing it harder, bro. Swing it harder. <laughs> Take it up. <laughs> I don't know what the hell happened, but yeah. Faster, right? <laughs> <laughs> what was that saying? That was Ian. That's Ian. Oh, is that Ian? <laughs> uh. So when you started telling this story, I'm like, oh, this is perfect. This is what I was asking him earlier to make sure I could play straight from the pod. So that was the podcast, the, yeah. the previous podcast. Oh, okay. Out, so. So I told you you're gonna like Jeremy a little less. <laughs> yeah. Take, taking some digs at you, saying you're the least improved, but that was too fitting not to share with your oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with your club story. Yeah, oh. but hopefully, uh, like I said, when I get my new clubs in, I went back and I uh, chiseled off all the dirt because I had loaned my uh, clubs to Max Kelly, mm. <laughs> and when he brought them back to me, they literally had big clobs <laughs> of dirt at the end of it, and I was like, "Do you never clean them?" And he was, "No, are you supposed to?" You know. <laughs> So, this dude's an animal. He is. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I'm playing those right now until uh, my other clubs come in. Sweet. So, oh, what do you got? Well, I was just going to say, you know, you mentioned your wife got married, Tracy. Why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about your family? Obviously, you got Brad here. Tell us about the rest of the gang. Yep. Um, my wife, Tracy, uh, met her up in Indianapolis. Been married for 33 years. She likes to play golf. Uh, she doesn't take it real serious. But uh, we play in some couples things. And uh, then I've got Bradley and then my daughter, Tori. And Tori's starting to pick up golf. Um, very close family. We're all, um, you know, uh, I'm, tr- I'm not sure real how to say it, but a very tight-knit family. Uh, spent a lot of time with our kids. We really invested a lot of time in the kids. And <clears throat> like I said, I was a five handicap at one point. And then when you get, got involved in the T-ball and the Little League and the travel sports and doing things like that, I just literally put my family up to another to a pedestal sure. and uh, spent a lot of time with them, which you can never, ever, ever so how much? How, how many times were you playing a week before I was born? <laughs> uh, three, well, at least I'd say three to four times. Three or four, I'd say four, about four times a week. That's nice. And you were, I, 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 you were a member at John City Country Club? Yeah, I was a member at the John City Country Club. I was a board member. Um, I was over the golf committee and, and all that and, um, you know, played a lot of golf out there and, and enjoyed it. We had a group of us that we would always play. And yeah. what was your span? Because I remember you always told me, what was your span that you hung it up? You Gosh. played like... It was probably almost a 10-year time frame. I mean... Like he, you said you played like four rounds in 10 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I just went, I mean, if you would have called me up and said, hey, I can get us on Augusta, but I'm going to pick you up in five minutes, I would not have been able to find my clubs. I used to keep my clubs in the basement in that back cubby hole, you know, where we put all the boating and stuff, yep. boating stuff back yep. there. And I found them one time back there, just crammed back in there. So, yeah, I mean, I didn't even know, where my, didn't even know where my clubs were. And, you know, I, I wouldn't trade that time for the world. And we got a boat and, um, you know. That's a little more fun for the whole family. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And that was the best time we invested. You know, somebody told me, you know, about buying a boat that, you know, it's great family time. And the kids and their friends always wanted to come out with us because yeah. we had the boat. So we just spent a lot of great time. That's great. What all uh, what all places in, throughout your whole life have you been a member at and played, I guess, <clears throat> well, Shelbyville? As far as being a member, I guess I started out at Shelbyville Country Club and then went to um, Johnson City Country Club when we moved here. And then uh, now I'm a member at Blackthorn. Uh, I've played a lot of different places. Anything from Pinehurst to, um, oh, what are some of the other places? Played some around Nashville, uh, Grove Park. Uh, Old Farm. Yeah, Old Farm, Virginian. Um, I, you know, nothing too exotic, but it was good. Uh, Elk River? Yep. Yeah. Elk River, Grandfather Mountain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Trace. Tracy's the one that's spoiled. Uh, my wife, because of my job when we would go places, she would get to play 
really nice courses. I, I think the worst course she's ever played is Johnson City Country Club. That's a good one to have at the bottom of your I mean, list. I mean, I mean, she plays, you know, the Blackthorn Country Club. That's not Pine true. Hurst, where she went up to Indianapolis. Oh, that's true. And yep. she played golf with her sisters. Yeah, she's got a sister and a friend that's big in golf. Mm -hmm. And then just normal public course. It was the first public course. She's in her fifties, and it was the first public course she's ever stepped foot on in her life. Yep. Mm, culture yeah. shock. <laughs> yeah. Fair yeah. enough. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a quick little break, and then we'll jump back with the new segment before we dive on into our interview. We got drinks with the dudes. What are we, uh, what are we having today, Donnie? We got the good old-fashioned staple. I feel like for a lot of us, Woodford Reserve. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't love some Woodford? I feel like that's one of the most stock you know, bourbons you're going to get in terms of not overpaying, but you're getting a really good quality for the price point. I, I don't know how you beat it in that. In that price range. So us three, we're actually drinking it on the rocks. Got a, it's actually, I mean, it kind of melted throughout the day, but it was a golf ball. It's a golf ball ice ball for bourbon hey, drinks. It's still circular. So it is. Yeah, it's yeah. a little smaller in size. I see a little bit of dimples. Yeah. But um, so just bourbon on the rocks. We're going to kind of just uh, give it a taste, see it on the palate, give it a little rating, yep. see where it ranks. All right. just smooth i mean it's just it's it's personally my favorite to keep around the house yep yep this is ron what do you think uh, i like it i'm not a um i'm not real particular i don't drink a whole lot mm -hmm. uh <clears throat> used to <laughs> but <laughs> uh, as i've gotten older uh i really haven't but no i really like the woodford but it is would What's you your... ever share the um uh, the Maker's Mark that we drank? Shared on here? Yeah. No. <clears throat> when um, I graduated from college, a friend of mine got me, or some friends, got me a bottle of Maker's Mark bourbon, uh, gold. And, um, you know, and on the seal it said, especially selected for Ronald J. Nagley. That's sick. <clears throat> yeah, it was really cool. I was, you know, 22 years old and... We're sitting there drinking, and of course I'm drunk, and I'm like, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to drink it with my son, but he turns 21. That's what I'm going to do. And <laughs> everybody knew that it was going to be gone by the end of the week. Yeah, I was like, that's not going to make it it's not 21 gonna, years, no it's chance. Not, it's not going to make it. So, uh, But it actually did. And, really? Uh, yeah. So he never he never cracked the seal. It was oh, in a it was that. in an engraved box and sitting in his closet for so many years. I turned twenty one and he got it out. We looked up the price and it was a thousand dollar bottle. Yep. And so he we said, mm, Do we want to crack this? I mean, because we were down here at Holy Taco and we're like, this I mean it's a nice occasion, but it's not really it's not really a thousand dollar ice uh, occasion <laughs> yeah. right here. So we ended up uh, We did we didn't drink it. On my birthday, my 21st, we did end up actually at a rehearsal dinner when we were, me and Stephanie were getting married, kind of gave that story and he told that story to everybody that was at the rehearsal dinner and we opened it up to anybody that wanted a shot of it. And, and we had uh, these little shots. At, at the time, I think that's we, really cool. At the time of it, I that's think it was dope. like a $1,200 bottle mm -hmm. and we just but, poured shots and uh, anyone that wanted one could come up and get one. That's a, I mean, that's a, you know. I'm yeah. sure it was a good wedding, but that's a little added something extra you don't get at your average yep. average everyday wedding right there. So that's yep. pretty cool. That's what Maker's Mark has always just got a little special meaning to me sure. for that. Yeah. And years ago when I was, uh, I can't remember, maybe a freshman in college or so, uh, the girl that I was dating back then, we went to a Maker's Mark brewery, and I just saw how it was made. Yeah. You know, got to remember, this is 1986 or something. And it was just crazy. You know, and they've got that wax seal on it. And it's crazy. I just assumed, you know, there was some type of big machine, you know, that's yeah, just know, grabbing them and dunking them and doing this other like stuff. Like automated. Yeah, yeah, automated. Yeah. And we walk in this little room, and there's two little old ladies there grabbing them as they come by in the conveyor belt, just dipping, dipping it, it. And setting it down, grabbing another one, dipping it and setting it down. And you're like, really? Like, that's how this is done? Exactly. That's awesome. You know, it was kind of cool that you said that. I, uh, a couple of years ago, I actually did the distillery tour mm -hmm. of Woodford when I went up to watch it was the ETSU Kentucky basketball game a couple of years ago I mean I was like four or five years ago went with my buddy Calvin and we went up there and then the next day did the tour of it and it's like between that and like Brad said like this is the one that he keeps around the house like basically mm -hmm. if we have vodka it's going to be Tito's and if it's going to be like some sort of whiskey or bourbon it's going to be 
um, Woodford. I mean, yep. I just think those are two really good ones. And when you go to the, like see where it's made, it even makes it a little bit cooler. Right. So. Exactly right. <clears throat> so what do we give this as a number, Brad? <clears throat> I mean, I've had really good stuff. I'm going to give the... I'm going to give it a solid 8.2. What are you laughing at? What are you laughing about there? He's got the point system. Oh, you have to. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you just can't come out here with a lazy 8. There's a big difference between an 8.2 and an 8.7. Yeah, because that starts trending towards 9. Yeah. I mean, that just (laughs) completely changes the dynamic. But, no, it's that that staple for around the house, drink in the evenings. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to be like, whoa, you got that. But it's also, like, anybody would be good to drink it. I always know you can question someone as, like, someone's character. Mm -hmm. If they're a whiskey drinker and they're like, oh, no, I I can't do Woodford. It's like, okay, you probably can't be trusted. Just FYI, (laughs) I bought the Woodford (laughs) from my house. (laughs) Fair enough. So that's why why it's here. Yeah. Um, So, Ron. What number we got? We need we need a point on this. Wow, mm. golly, um, not really sure because normally I order Maker's Mark and I love Woodford and and and, and it's good. I'm gonna have to go with a a solid eight. Wow, just no no points, just a solid eight. Eight just, point zero. Uh, eight point zero is what he meant to say. Zero is what I'm trying to say. Great. Well, I think this is going to be our highest rated drink that we've had on here so far before brad gave his answer i already knew what i was saying it was an 8.2 really? so, wow, yeah, wow. yeah seriously yeah like so when you said that, that like you'd probably see i was like oh shit like oh that's weird that's that an average of like an 8.175 or something like that. 8.16667 <laughs> yeah. something like repeating that. repeating yeah so wow guys that's yeah. i mean i think that's our highest one that we've had yet so brad great choice on bringing this in um yeah well, that was a good little segment there, getting to try that out. Let's go ahead and dive on into our main uh, section of this podcast. So I think earlier we were going to ask about kind of your golf journey. You touched on that a little bit. Um, but let's talk. start off with the golf question. Uh, I know me and Brad can't say we have. Have you ever been lucky enough to make a, an eagle or a hole-in-one or anything cool like that? I had several eagles. Uh, yeah, I've we've got, made those too. Yep. Just throwing that in. Got three, <laughs> I've got three hole-in-ones. Three. Three of them. Okay, so and so, just because we need to hear the stories, yeah, how they happen yeah. where they were at, what holes, who was with you. Uh, let's see here. Actually, my first one was in May of '94. I looked at my plaques before I left my office today. Smart. He had a feeling. <laughs> yep, he knew this was coming up. <laughs> I was trying to figure something interesting that I could actually talk about. Uh, May of '94, um, I was in Hilton Head Island with my friends Steve Smith and Frank Anderson. And we were on a par three. It was a 147-yard par three. I used a smooth five wood. <laughs> I'm 147 that's like, yards. That's Donnie status right there. <laughs> and right, what's off. what's so funny is there is a large uh, body of water in front of us. You know, you got trees. We're in a shipyard. We've got trees down the left, a uh, big old body of water in front of us, and then there was a green on the other side. I jerked that thing, and it started to go into the woods, and I yelled, no, 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 and it circled, never crossed the water, circled around it, and it bounced, bounced, and then went into the hole, and it was the ugliest hole in one, hole in one on record, and but who uh, cares? Who cares? But my, my friend on the scorecard, and it's in my office, he wrote, uh, you know, one, circled it twice like that, and then he wrote five wood. <laughs> <laughs> just so people knew exactly he said he said that is not right 147 yard five wood was that was it windy or something <clears throat> sure we'll go with that <laughs> <laughs> however you got to spin it back then i played the clubs that i was told were very very good clubs but i didn't understand what that meant they are wilson staff 1958 with no sweet spot these were my dad's clubs that had given to me and, and I've, tr- I've tried to hit them. They are full-on blades with a two iron. The entire club is maybe two and a half inches wide. The sweet spot is the size of your pinky fingernail. Yep. Mm. And I never could. I, I mean, that's, I was a horrible golfer back then. And, and, um, and, and it was just it was so bad. And um, so that's why I hit a five wood because I couldn't hit a seven iron 150 yards. I couldn't hit a four iron. And then when I... Years later, That's I ended up crazy. getting some clubs with ultras. I ended up buying some ultras, Wilson ultras, and all of a sudden they had sweet spots to them. And that's when I started getting better. 
So my first one <clears throat> was May of 94. My second one was um, June of 94. <clears throat> and I was actually playing by myself on number, what is it, 11, 12 out of Johnson City Country Club. And two guys, two guys were playing in front of me. They walked off the green. And as they walked off the green, I hit. And all of a sudden, they turned around and started j- jumping up and down. Number 12. And, That's an insane one. Yeah. And um, they were jumping up and down and waving up and down like that. And I kind of ran up there. And I was like, what, what? And they said, it went in the hole, it went in the hole. So I was playing by myself, but I did have some witnesses. And then my third one happened in December of 98. And I uh, had had a bad day at work that day. And I said, forget this. And I walked out of the office, went home, picked up Bradley. He was three years old at the time. And I was playing. And there was nobody out there. And uh, number two, I hit a shot. And it dropped in the hole. And I threw down my club and said, shit. <laughs> and no one did a test for it except for your three-year-old son. <laughs> exactly. It's like, and right. I'll never forget Bradley sat there and he said, what's wrong, Daddy? What's wrong? What's wrong? I said, Daddy just hit a shot. No one's going to believe. There was nobody coming down one. There was mm. nobody on three. There was nobody on ten. No, there was nobody. And I called the pro shop and I was like, hey, I just hit a hole in one. I said, is there any way that'll count in the hole in one club and stuff? And they said, any witnesses? I said, yeah, my three-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> what was their response? Honestly, he said, three weeks before Christmas, I don't think so. <laughs> he thought I was going to blackmail my son, you know, tell everybody that he got a hole in one. I'll get you, get you that bike you want. So, uh, yeah. Those, those, those savage. Yep. And I haven't sniffed the green since. That was December 4th of 98. And what? actually, that, now that's not, uh, that, what was it? We were playing uh I can't remember if Brad were you with us in yeah. Crockett's Ridge when I called my shot. Oh yeah, so that was gonna say you. That was that was sniffing one. Yeah, I, I sniffed one, Which about, one was a, this about one? a month ago. We were playing number two. Number two at Crockett's Ridge. Yeah, and, and I was, was playing terrible. We actually started on the back. They had to start off the back that day. Mm. We yeah. were so we're on the I guess our eleventh hole, number two, Crockett's Ridge, and he'd been playing terrible. He's, and I, I walked up on the tee and I, and I took my club and I pointed. And I said, "You ever seen a hole one? You ever seen a hole?" And I was pointed at him. I said, because you're lucky. I said, Bradley, I know you've seen a hole in number one because you were with me when I did that. I said, you boys are in front of the tree. I'm going to put this sucker in the hole. And I hit it, and it seat that damn pin. And it was right on it, and everybody was going, oh, shit, he called his shot. He called his <laughs> shot. And literally hit about a foot behind it and sucked back to it. Hit the lip of it. Mm-hmm. Hit the lip of it and whatever. So it, but I was, but Jeez. that would have been so Oh, cool. that, that would have been a walk-off <laughs> moment. Like, That's legendary. Legendary. Like, he literally called a shot. He literally said, watch this. I'm going to do it. But, you, uh, so you know about our hole-in-one challenge, right? Uh, what is it? Uh, if you get a hole-in-one at a dude's event, Donnie's going to give you 1000 bucks. Sweet. Yeah. Now, does that come out of our pocket, or do you have like a? Is that, no, that's we, just we got like a, a little fun, a little fun. Yeah, yeah. So basically, and this is like one of our like sanctioned tournaments. So like, if you get together with two guys and the dudes, and like, hey, I made a thousand bucks, man. Uh, no, that doesn't count. So we're gonna we're gonna need to see it at an event. But we've gotten scared a couple times. Um, right. At the Iron Man one, I was sitting behind the green on number, I guess five at Pine Oaks Mm -hmm. and Matt Westmoreland hit one a little bit behind the pin, came back, kicked off the lip of the cup and settled Mm -hmm. like a foot and a half out. I was like, okay, Max Kelly's almost made like three of them. Really? (laughs) Oh, like boomer bust. (laughs) Like, like, I mean, this guy is nowhere to be found or it's like, I mean, at the member guest last year, he almost made a hole in one. And I was on video too. Mitch was filming. At one point, like, I mean, you see me with my hands on my head because, like, I watched yeah. it land in yeah. front of the hole, and I'm like, this is going in the hole. Meanwhile, Justin's on the tee. Is it in play? And I'm like, yeah, no. Max. <laughs> yeah, exactly. he's like, I'll just pick up for Max. Two-footer for Birdie. <laughs> nah, just put me down for Bogue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, got another question for you. You mentioned family is actually pretty close-knit. That's mm-hmm. something I know from being around. What is – like one holiday or family event, like what's a staple tradition that you guys have that you can count on? Everyone's making this no matter what we're going to make it happen. You know, uh, I don't know, Tom Brett, I can't think of anything that is safe. I mean, used to be because it's a, a, as your kids get married, it's a give and take. Yep. And I would say it's Christmas or it's this, or it's that. And when your kids get married, it becomes a game of give and take of, you know, you all were at Christmas, you spent Christmas in, um, 
No, uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. We were in Colorado. Yeah, they were out in Colorado. Um, you know, I mean, Tori, uh, several years ago at Christmas, you know, it's big, and we got that awesome uh, snow, and she was in... in um, they were at Justin's parents' house. Yeah, they Carolina. were at Justin's parents'. So I wish I could say no matter what, my kids will be home for Christmas or Thanksgiving or this holiday. I can't think of anything that's that sacred. I know they want to be there, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's a give-and-take game mm -hmm. when, when you do that. And, and you have to accept that. Sure. You, you really do. You've got to be able to accept it. You cannot just draw a line and say every Christmas <laughs> is with us. Um, <laughs> that's going to be a little tough to be agreeable on that. Yeah. How about birthdays? I feel like those are pretty big for you guys. Yeah, birthdays normally are. Uh, we have. Um, they've they've always been big in the past. You know, Bradley's always whined and cried about it. One year he only got a car and um, what was it? I think we spent seven hundred dollars going out to dinner that day, and he cried. Lily cried because he did not get a cake that year. Because he didn't get a cake. A cake. I he, got the car. I got, got a, a car, car and a. We went to like a really nice dinner. It was like seven hundred dollars. We went to Gourmet with like six or seven people. Gourmet is not a cheap place. No. And um, and well, in years in the past, I've I've taken him and his Damn, friends. Brad, to, not a great look. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> How old was he for this? I was sixteen. It was my sixteenth birthday. It was the sixteenth birthday. Cancer. And that wasn't a brand new car. What it was a '97 Toyota 4Runner, very nice, by the way. But um, how do you remember that? And you don't remember what you had for breakfast. I, <laughs> it's the important things that matter. It's the important yeah. thing. I would have never expected you to remember the year, the exact <laughs> year, make and model. Yeah, but. exactly. You had a hundred and thirty-two thousand five hundred and twenty miles. But uh, yeah, so but birthdays have always been a big deal, and. Um, but as as time goes on, things change. So that's the good thing is now I just give them a hundred bucks and move on down the road. <laughs> a little bit easier. One, uh, I guess I don't know if it's a tradition or maybe it's like your family's game or whatever. But the one thing I always remember from your guys is family coming over for events was like left, center, right, yeah. and that has just turned into like even for the dudes like an all time game. If we ever go in somewhere, you start breaking that game out, and I don't know how people can't have fun. Yep. It, it, that's a blast game. I hate games. I don't like games. And Tracy said, we're well, going to play a game tonight. And I was like, oh, gosh. And, <laughs> Not again. And we started playing that. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm like going, yeah, let's just keep playing and stuff. And I remember we did that one time with work. You know how you got to tell everybody, all right, it's, you got five ones or you got ten ones or whatever mm -hmm. you're playing for out in front of you. You can't reach in your pocket. Yeah, you, you can't just, just be the bank, keep on reloading yourself. <laughs> whatever. No, at, never out. <laughs> at one work, at, one work at, I'll never forget, like, the pot was like, supposed to be like a hundred dollars or, or whatever it was or sixty dollars and when they counted it it was 63 <laughs> he's like okay we're like how <laughs> how did that happen how can you do that like travis one of our partners he was just every time he ran out of money he'd reach in his pocket and pull another one out <laughs> i'm never out baby <laughs> and he just kept on doing it. we said you can't do that he goes oh you can't so, golly. No, it was, so, it was just so funny. <laughs> Anyone got changed for a hundred? <laughs> so I, I, I got to buy back into this game again. <laughs> they counted it up, and they had sixty-three. And I was like, "How do you get sixty-three dollars?" So, but yeah, that that that's a good game. That and that'll bring anybody out of the shell. Yes, so I will. That, that that that's a great game. But. So you've you've been in the area for a while. Mm -hmm. How how have you seen Johnson City grow? What are the changes you have oh. seen? I mean, it's crazy. It, it it really is. I remember um, oh, out there where Lowe's and Home Depot and all that area, that was in the sticks. That was the sticks. Uh, that's unfathomable Yeah, to really think. I remember where uh, I had a Cocker Spaniel back then, and we somebody told me about a groomer, and she gave me directions. And I went to Mahoney's right there and turned right. And drove forever to to find this person, and it was she was uh, what's that you know the railroad that you'll go under yep. when you go past Lowe's like and Knob that. Creek and yes that. Mm -hmm. yep right, right there right. she was right there to the right right before you go under the railroad she was right there and I was in the sticks back then in the sticks that was crazy because I was like and you couldn't call because you didn't have cell phones back then. And uh, but yeah, we've experienced so much growth. The growth here in in, in Johnson City has been great, um, you know, and things like that. But uh, just so out near like Boone's Creek area, 
Did you? Oh. No, well, that had just been straight farmland. Yeah, yeah. Every bit of it are woods. Just I mean, straight just... farmland. I remember when they came to the country club with the idea of uh, opening uh, Blackthorn. Yep. Or the ridges, and uh, put it to the member vote, and that was a disaster. That should have been Johnson City Country Club out there, but uh, <clears throat> because they basically made a uh, so, proposal. Yeah, I don't know if you do you know that at all. Uh, a little bit of the story, yeah. but no, not just, not all the and, details. And I've not yeah. into all the privy information, but the idea was, hey, you give us the country club, and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna operate this country club. The, the investors came up and said, we're gonna move Johnson City Country Club out there to where the ridges is. Yep. That'll be the Johnson City Country Club. We're going to operate this thing over here and everything. And it got shot down. It got shot down because of... So what of, would the country club have been? Like, they would have just let it go under? Or like, no, no, they or, would have, like, uh, opened it up as a semi-private club. Oh, nice. Or, okay, or it's like a like secondary that. course. Yeah, it would have been a secondary course, kind of. Or they even talked about possibly just keeping it and hosting events out at the country club. Sure. You know, because they've got that clubhouse there and everything, and yet they didn't have the clubhouse there out there. You know, and I was talking with somebody the other day, and they said, I remember when I joined um, the Ridges, they said it was literally where the driving range is. They said there was a trailer up there, and that was the pro shop, and that was everything. So, uh, yeah, we've seen just tons of growth, uh, you know, in, in, in the community, in downtown, and uh, and everything. So when like, you first moved here, what was the downtown scene like? Because I know, at least on my end of things, of coming to school here in that, like, 20 20- 14 range downtown was pretty dead there wasn't much to it and then in the last you know we'll call it five to eight years it's made a tremendous amount of progress i feel like yeah so what did it used to be good and went down or was it always just kind of uh it was never good since i've been here uh you know i moved here in 1990 i remember i was in a small town in kentucky and uh, i was starting to work there and um you know tracy and i were dating And it was so small that if you were the president of the United States and you came to this town, it was called Cynthiana, Kentucky. If you were the president of the United States and you came to town and we wanted to impress you, the nicest place we could take you was Ponderosa, which I don't know if you remember. That's like Orion's steakhouse. Yep. Um, That was it. And when Tracy and I were going to be getting married, she wasn't into going from Indianapolis to a town that small. So we came to Johnson City, and Johnson City had a Bennigan's. And a Cheers. <laughs> Those were the two restaurants that they had. And we're like, well, shoot, yeah, man, this is awesome. This is living. This is, yeah. So <laughs> we, I have a choice. In. Exactly. And uh, it was, uh, you know, it was something where you could go get a drink and you could uh, and have a nice meal. So, but that was it. As far as downtown, I don't remember anything being downtown. Uh, wow. But it, it, it's come along. It's come along. I, I'm still not real familiar with downtown. Um, you know, my wife wishes I was. <laughs> you know, be a little bit more familiar with the bars and the breweries and the things like that. But, um, but yeah, we've experienced just a ton of growth here. What have you thought about ETSU bringing their football team back here in, in town? Love it. Yep. Love it. Lo- lo- love it that they're, they're bringing it back and um, that they're doing well. I-, I hope they can turn things around. You know, so much of the community can thrive around a good football team or basketball team. And we, we've seen that, Yeah, you know, when we had a uh, coach Sanders and, and the football yep. team was winning. I mean, yeah. everybody starts wearing ETSU stuff. Everybody's yeah. it, it's, it just happens that way. When you had coach Forbes with the basketball, it just grows and it flourishes and it just brings the whole community together. And, um, you know, right now I'm really not seeing that. So I'm hoping we can, you know, turn, turn some things around get some wins and uh, kind of get the community behind it. But um, it's going to, you know, it, it, it'll take some time. But, you know, somebody told me it's like uh, Boone, North Carolina. I mean, it's a little bitty place. It's, there's nothing yeah. special about it. But you got Abbey State there. Man. And they play football. And they play good football. Yep. And every business you go into, they got a Buccaneer, yep. or not a Buccaneer sign, an Apple, you know, they, they've got banners. They Everywhere you go, that's all you see. Because they live and they breathe it. You know, when I first moved here, the <clears throat> Nebraska fans growing up, so obviously nowhere close to here. They're not playing in any SEC teams on the regular. And ETSU didn't have a football team at the time when I first moved mm-hmm. here in, like, I guess 2006. Right. Um, and so loved watching football and everything. So my dad, around that time, that was the year that App State had just beaten. I guess the next year, it was my freshman year of high school, was when they beat Michigan. Michigan, yep. And, you know – 
it was like, wow, it was pretty cool. And my dad was like, hey, this is only like an hour and a half away. Like, because we were living in Bristol. And we're like, we, we should go up for a game. We went up for a regular season game. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Well, the next year, we actually got season tickets for three years in a row to go really? up and watch them play. That's great. So I was there for the two of the three years that they had that three-peat session going. Mm -hmm. And it was like, this is like being a high schooler. So like, wasn't like drinking or doing anything like that. I was going to these games with my dad. And I just remember being like that environment up there, that whole town, like on game day, mm -hmm. it's like, you know what? We're not talking about anything else. We're, we're talking about the game. We're going to think about the game. We're going to have some beers before we go into the game. And like, that's what the environment was. And those fans up there, I'll, I'll never forget the environment of some of those games up there. The student section was the rowdiest student section Mm -hmm. I'd been in. They played the Richmond Spiders one year in a playoff game and were down three scores late in the game. With, do you remember Armani Edwards? That He was that quarterback that beat Michigan. The guy yeah, that was yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. This, this guy I remember was watching, I'm going off on a side tangent here, but like it, it was just like every stack line was 368 passing yards, 155 on the ground, seven total touchdowns. Right. And this dude put up five touchdowns in the second half to lead him from behind. Mm -hmm. We had students lighting spiders like foam spiders oh, wow. on fire in the crowd. So you have like security and stuff. And I remember just being like, this is a wild thing. Yep. <clears throat> ETSU is never going to get to that point. Oh. It just won't. And not in this town. There's a little too much to do. It's a little too big. But if we could just get somewhat of the way there, we don't have to be burning s s stuffed animals in the stadiums. You know, but ETSU could get there if all of a sudden they put winning season after winning season after winning season and it became a way of life. Because it's it, it's expected. It, you know, when we have a winning season here, it's like yay, but it's not expected. I mean, it's like Kentucky. I'm a University of Kentucky graduate. You know, you don't win the national championship. We need to fire somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we need immediate results. <laughs> exactly. You know, we didn't hire you to get second or whatever. So, um, but if you can build that expectations, which we started to with with, with Coach Sanders, I, I thought and, we were, and then just th things. Yeah. And, and, and that happened in a basketball. I mean, you know, but it costs money. I mean, and, and you can't blame a guy to come in here, turn no. the program around, and somebody says, hey, we'll give you a million or $2 million. We can't pay that. Well, I feel like when Forbes was here, I mean, I don't think anyone thought realistically there was a chance he was going to stay here for forever. Right. I mean, it's just. Well, the only thing that we had going for us is we chose you when nobody would. Mm -hmm. And we're giving you a very, very lucrative deal. Now, it's not millions, but it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. Nice cash. Yeah, very nice, which is very well. You can live very comfortably around here. But if if it's all about big time, I mean, of course you're going to leave. I mean, you can't blame him for going to Wake Forest. No, not at all. You got a question for him? What's your favorite place to eat around here? I mean, you're going out. You get to choose your birthday dinner. It is coming up. Ooh, Mom's dinner. not cooking. Because I know that's what you do. You'd Chocolate. say cook something. <laughs> But where where do you want to go? Honestly, I don't know. I don't have a clue. I mean, where I want to go is Ruth Chris. <laughs> yeah. But that's, you know, we don't have one in Johnson City. Asheville or Knoxville. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. Uh, anywhere where I can get a good steak. That's, I, so that's, that's what you're looking for on the menu. I'm looking a for steak. a good steak. You know, and a Ruth Chris. Have you I been to Ruth Chris? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, lo I love a Ruth Chris or, or something like that. What do you think about Juniper? Juniper, it was good. Mm -hmm. It was it was good. It, it it wasn't like a Ruth Chris quality or, or anything like that. But, did you get a uh, steak there? Gosh, I can't remember. I want to say I did. <laughs> okay. I normally get steak there. That's the way you get looking like I do. Is you eat steak every meal, man? <laughs> okay, I got do the I halibut like I when I went there. Do you, so. think, do you think I ordered fish? Seriously. <laughs> I love fish. I, that, that's my go-to if I'm going somewhere. Nice. Really? Yeah. Really? God, that's fish. a punishment, man. It's like oh, I love fish. Good, good fish that's like cooked the right way. Can't be beat. No, that's what like when I went to Juniper, they had some like uh, halibut with just like all the perfect fixings and size that I was looking for. I was like, okay, yeah, that's a special. Do I get probably gonna? Oh, it was phenomenal. Yeah, me yeah. and Jamie have only been once. We we really liked it. Um, we kind of. Sports a little bit, got like the first course, the second course, right? But it, it, we enjoyed our time. So it's, I've not been yet, but he said it's it's fairly expensive around here. It's not cheap. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're like oh, I'm on a budget this week, gotta kind of watch something. <laughs> don't no, go there. Don't, you're you're gonna want to cancel that reservation at Juniper. It's yeah. it's gonna cost you a little bit. I mean, like you could find something on there, but if you're going, 
Do it right. You're, you're going to, yeah. What do you think? You want to go there for your birthday? You'll treat us? No. <laughs> nice guy. That's the problem. I end up you'll, paying. Like, look at this. You'll, you'll treat us for yeah, your birthday? Exactly. Ron's like, I'm it's the Toyota like, yeah, Forerunner all over. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to go to your birthday dinner and be mad you didn't pay. Yeah. This is unreasonable. But I, I just, you know, anywhere I could get a good steak. And I've had a great steak at Outback. I've had a great steak at Longhorn. I've had, but I'm That's like, fair. But, but, you know, I. Uh, you know, I, I would like to have that one place that, you know, that they're known for. And you got to have reservations to get in. And, you know, but, um, and that's what I hope Johnson City experiences, some more mom and pop type of restaurants um, that just have, you know, great food, whether it yep. be Italian. And, you know, of course, uh, before the Masters, we went to um, Bella, Bella, Vita. Bella Vita. And that was very, very good. Very I, good. I, I like yep. that place. And I don't give that, it's not real high on my list. Yeah, I I always seem to forget about it for some exactly. reason, but like it's real. I, every time I've eaten there, it's, I've been like, "This is this is really good." Mm -hmm. So I told Steph, I said, "You know, it's we need to go there if we want Italian because that's yep. it it's was great, phenomenal, phenomenal." And if you're on a low carb diet, it's a it's, it's a great place it's to go. Terrible to go if you're on a low carb <laughs> diet. They serve fresh bread, <laughs> pasta. <laughs> that was great that night. You're like, oh, okay, I, I'm missing out on all the good stuff. I got there. like sausage, peppers, and onions. <laughs> uh, he was holding strong. He was holding strong, doing uh, really, really well, until he got a text from Steph saying that she caved that night, and all of a sudden, all <laughs> he said, "All right, all well, bets are off, yeah. man." I wasn't that bad. I I just had a couple pieces you of bread. Ate six loaves of bread. Yeah, six dude. loaves of bread. At now one, you're lying. No, at one point, dude, the the butter was bigger than the bread was. Oh, yeah. was that, like, that was oh Hugh. my gosh, that was you. I feel like it was both of you guys, but it was you. <laughs> That's yeah, that was absurd. Yeah, uh, he took two packs of butter yeah, and for put one. it on a piece of bread that was like one inch by one inch. <laughs> Absurd. He's like, I like my butter. Like, yeah. Oh, okay, man. <laughs> Whatever you say. Um, so, out of the dudes' events that you've played in, what has been your favorite so far? Well, I've really only played in a couple. Um, I mean, I really enjoyed the Masters. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Masters was good, uh, other than the 50-mile-an-hour wind. Yeah, but, the, the, that yes. was banana land. That was crazy. That right. afternoon wave was like so. I played in the group in front of you guys yeah, that day, yeah, and I was just like, "Bro, this this is hard to play golf in this." Like, yeah, yeah. And I can't remember what I think I shot like a ninety-seven or something. I mean, what did Hugh pull out? An eighty-three or something? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but he it was kind of mid to low eighties. Yeah, you know? mid to low eighties, and you got to think, you know, surely if it wasn't fifty mile an hour winds. He could have cut one stroke. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure. You know, yeah. you know what I yeah. mean? Like, and, I shot a 97 that day. Yeah. And, like, I remember thinking, like, I, like, I didn't play bad golf. Right. It's just, like, you'd have a, one or two shots that just the wind would get so loose. Like, there was one I missed right so bad. And, like, you can literally tell it got up in the wind and just went. And I was like, okay. There was one hole. It wasn't that bad. There was a hole. It was kind of dead into the teeth of the wind. Can't remember what hole. Uh, I feel like that was thirteen of the holes out there that day. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was a lot. I had a hundred and fifty yards in, and I flushed a four iron, and I was thirty yards short. Yep. No, I mean that was that was the name of the game that day. Mm -hmm. Like just the number seventeen, that little par three, mm -hmm. hundred and like forty yards. I hit my five high bridge Blank. and like barely got onto the green by like two feet. And playing I'm like, like two hundred. Yeah, playing like two hundred. I was like, dude, this is. It, but, it's, until you play in a wind like that, like you really just don't know what to expect. But I remember several times being over my ball and then being pushed back yes. by the wind, and you kind of like you laugh, <laughs> and then you took a step back up to the ball. Like when you're when it's hard to even balance in your pre-shot thing, it, it doesn't leave a lot of faith in the confidence or the quality of the yep. strike that's upcoming. Yep. When you're like when you're standing over your putt and the ball starts moving <laughs> with you just standing there, it's yeah, like, like mm. uh, okay, <laughs> up the hill. No, uh, so at one point I had dropped my hybrid when we were going up to number seven on the tee box below the one we were playing from, and the wind because it was coming up number seven just blew my hybrid cover up the hill to us up to the next tee box, <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a problem yeah. guys i was like this this got blown up the hill and it like yeah i was like i don't know what to say here but but so I, I, that day was crazy at the wind but i i really enjoyed the masters it was yeah. great i got to know jade um had met jade 
And um, you guys played together Sunday, didn't you, at Warriors? Yeah, yeah, yeah we played together Sunday at Warriors, and um, we, we had a great time. And you know, he was telling me about the uh, Monday night out there, which yep. you know, I highly recommend anybody come out there and play because it's a great time. I mean, you go out yep. there and you play nine hole select shot, and uh, I've I've really really enjoyed that. So it's definitely worth going out there, and that's one of the things that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get out there and play some, trying and meet some new people. Yeah, trying to play some out at Blackthorn. Uh, Unfortunately, a lot of the guys that I've played with out of Blackthorn have gotten, they're so good that I used to play with them a lot, but I mean, they're like plus one, you know, they're, yeah. and you know, they don't want to go out with somebody shooting a 95 or, you know, something. I mean, they will, you know, but you know, I know, I know what you're saying. Like in, in when you're playing with three guys, they're all shooting low well, zero. 70s. Zeros are better. Yeah. And, and you're shooting 95. It's just like, like you can tell that you're like, oh, you guys are waiting on me. Yeah. I'm the charity okay. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the charity guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, I've been on those ends of the rounds when I've like when we went to Elk River the day it was like Brad, Jeremy, Kate, and then me, and I'm like, there's a substantial drop off <laughs> after the top three guys in this group, and it was just like, okay, like I'm just out here, but yeah, well, even when you step up to a par three and they all got you know gap wedges yeah. or sand wedges and you got a six iron, you know, <laughs> hey, it does not matter what you hit. It is well, and I couldn't still hit, hit the it. six iron there, so that's yeah. the thing. Okay. I mean, I mean, I'm experiencing that. Is I mean, there's guys that are longer than me, Hugh. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys longer than me in this league, but if I can out wedge them and get closer, then I mean, that's what really that matters. Doesn't really matter. I had a couple of guys out at Men's League last Thursday bring you up, and they said, "I just love watching Bradley swing. He leaves nothing back. He holds nothing back." Oh yeah, <laughs> they were talking about that. And, uh, um, oh, yeah, drive for show. <laughs> <laughs> However, it's done. Um, what's your favorite golf trip you've been on? Wow, I can't say I've been on a favorite one. Um, you know, years ago, uh, went to some golf trip, went on some golf trips. Can't even remember what year it was, uh, like 91 or 92 when we got the, uh, Huge snowstorm. Gosh, y'all weren't even born yet, I guess. 93. 92 over here. So, uh, but I was in Japan. So, yeah, I'm out <laughs> on remembering any of that. So, yep. Uh, when we got that huge snowstorm where we got like 20 inches, I was in Myrtle Beach with some guys and we were trying to play golf and they had just hurricane type winds there. And we were going to golf courses begging them to let us on. And it was just like hurricane winds. And we finally found one course that would let us on. And we were standing there just bare. I mean, it was a lot worse than we were at Crockett. Mm. And uh, we were our number one tee, and all of a sudden a big old tree <laughs> fell right across the tee, and the pro came out, I can't let you go out. I can't <laughs> let you go out. We're like, oh, man. But, um, you know, that one kind of sticks out of my mind. Um, Myrtle Beach was totally out of, uh, had no power, yet we went to an Italian restaurant, and they somehow manufactured food for us. That's impressive. I mean, it was just really, really cool. And, uh, you know, some trips like that. But uh, I haven't been on a, on a golf trip in years. I'm looking forward to going play. Uh, of course, I've, I've been to, to Hilton Head several times with a group of guys, and that, that's always a good time. Wouldn't that be a golf trip? But that would be a golf trip. He says golf trip in years. It was like literally last year. <laughs> I was like, wait. I even was thinking, I'm like, I thought you'd been on one of these well, kind of recent. You know, Jeremy went with me, and I said, hey, that's good. I've, I've got my golf instructor here. Well, hell, he doesn't do shit for you when you're out there in the course. Hey, yeah, no, you're on your, your own. Your instruction leaves when you leave that in. <laughs> Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you're just you another golfer, then. Yes, he, he's another person, you know. But uh, <laughs> God, your swing looks ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Who taught you that? You did. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see, Jerry. Well, this this invitational is going to be a lot of fun for you, then. This yep. could, I'm I mean, looking forward to it. I think you're really going to have a great time. I mean, good course, stellar, just top to bottom group of guys going on this trip. Um, my, my only thing. Is you know I'm out. I mean I'm not out of the trip, but I have no chance of winning. Yeah, you know. I, <laughs> you just said yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 You have to say no, Ron. You can do it. You're the little engine that could. But no, you say, yeah, you're right. You can't win. <laughs> Screw you, man. I'm gonna shoot you straight. <laughs> Screw it's you. Like, it's like my, my buddy Calvin's coming out to this, and I'm like, hey. You know, what he's excited about is that, like, if you miss the cut, you yeah. just miss the cut. Like, it doesn't actually put up, like, that you were dead last place in the tournament. It's just, like, a missed cut. MC. MC. So, he's like, this won't be that bad. So, how many we got going? 
24. 24 of us. So what's the cut? Going to be the 12. top 12? Yep. Top 12. And then what happens to the rest of us? And that's what's <laughs> really fun. So on Sunday, you scramble. basically... Oh, yeah. Are you shitting me? <laughs> yeah. I'm paying $500 to go play a damn scramble? <laughs> on Sunday, if you miss the cut. Make the cut. Yeah. Make the cut. Make the cut. No, the... Basically... If you don't make the cut on Saturday, you're you're going to be tired of grinding out there. And so the way we did this last year was a lot of fun. It's going to be another tournament. In, so if you miss With the that, cut, yeah, then you're, it's going to be like a two man scramble, correct? Yep. yep. And then you're going to it's going to kind of be in a competition of the people that miss the cut. Yeah. Okay. See who so, can win the next day. Because basically, it's like the dude that's 27 strokes off the lead. It's like, all right, I'm not going to make you go play from the tips today, right? And play your own ball down for the next 18 holes. Like you're just, you're not going to enjoy that. So the ones that make the cut are they going to play the tips? Yep. Yes. Oh hell, I don't want to make the cut. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> scramble it is. Scramble it is. <laughs> can, I, can I play scramble the first day? <laughs> so with yourself, this, there's actually only 23 people that are going to really be buying for the 24 <laughs> spots. Ron's already thrown himself out. <laughs> he said, "Who's my partner on Sunday?" <laughs> no, I mean honestly, the it was fun. Like last year, I missed the cut at this tournament, and then I won the the, the two man scramble on the Sunday. So I was like, "Hey, I, I mean, yeah. there was three winners that day: Brad, me, and Mark." I mean, about the only time me and Mark are probably going to win tournaments is on the Sunday scramble. So I mean, we got to take those when we can get them. Well, that's why I didn't know because like out of Blackthorn, they'll have a gross and a net, and mm-hmm. you just declare, "I want to." I want to do the net or, or, or whatever it would be and you know, doing it like that because, I mean, I, I can't go I mean, head to head with Brad or Hugh. Or, I mean, you could Phil Mickelson. I mean, Masters, Phil. I mean, one day, expected? maybe. Maybe. One day. You hey, might, so, hey. Saturday is 27 holes. You could work your way into the top 12. I mean, Alex, you absolutely could. Alex Miners uh, is the, the picture, the, the poster child of that. One day, I mean, you can. Well, like one day of really good uh, golf. Or, or a nine-hole stretch of just, like, lights-out golf can go yep. a long way. Right, but then the next day you come back and you're like, and that, yeah. But I, still, I if you make the cut, you make the cut. You do. This will be fun. I mean, so It's going to be from the tips with no max, but. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Oh, man. Uh, that's going to be a fun That's tournament. what scares me, the tips. It's not even age-based, you know, 57. and It's, it's fine. It's only 8,700 yards. <laughs> 8,700 <laughs> 8, yards. <laughs> That's what I need. <laughs> driver ET, driver on every par four. <laughs> oh man, this is so much driver, fun. driver, yeah, wedge. Yeah. <laughs> driver, no, driver. No, actually, I'd be pretty good if you'd let me hit driver, ET it up, and hit driver again. I'd actually be okay. Yeah. So just as long as I don't have to check for putt. Best part of your game of golf? Driving the ball. Driving the ball. I, I don't go anywhere. I go in the fairway probably eighty five percent of the time, but. It used to be I hit the ball as far as you guys did. Now, if I smoke it, 220. It's in the middle of the fairway. But it, Balls in play. 220. But then I have a longer iron, which I don't hit my irons well. Yeah. Then all of a sudden I'm off the green. Then I got a chip, which I don't chip well. And then I got. When, when, do, when do you qualify for senior tees in due to hazard? I don't know. That needs to be addressed. What is it, 60? So I want to say the rule of thumb is your handicap. Plus your age has to equal something, yeah. That's and then the you can go to it. what is it? Do you know the I, I formula? Can't remember if, if you, there's there's a formula. If you take your handicap right? plus your yeah. age, that qualifies you to go. So like if you're like a zero handicap, obviously then it's longer before you can go to senior tees. But if you're a ten handicap and you're sixty five, that totals yeah. seventy five. Yeah, it's like seventy five like, and above. You can. I, I, that's. I don't know if that's the correct numbers, but I want to say it's kind of. But like, it's a general concept. It's, right. it's one it's of those. Like if your age and your handicap equals like seventy, then you can go to senior tees. Right. Sweet. Well, Ron, really enjoyed talking with you here through our interview segment. Just kind of getting to know a little bit more about you. Uh, we got one segment left in this bad boy. Um, Brad, I'll let you go ahead and kind of take the reins on this and explain how this works. <clears throat> I think uh, I think you're going to enjoy the segment, Ron. Uh oh. <clears throat> so this is hazardous time. Basically, this is where we're going to kind of go. We ask questions, completely random. Answer it. Kind of be kind of brief, kind of long. If it needs a long explanation, that's fine. And then, if say I ask you a question, then you get to ask the next question to one of us. So hazardous time. First question. What is the worst part of your game that you are scared of when you're doing this? Chipping. <laughs> mm. I didn't do it. Last night and playing the uh, 
over at Crockett's Ridge. Uh, my partner chipped one up there, you know, probably six feet. We weren't very far off the green. And I literally chipped, and my ball went one inch. It moved mm. that far. That's not going to get it done at the invitation. I hate chipping. <laughs> That's going to cause you to miss the cut. And I got to say, <laughs> I have taken numerous <laughs> lessons from Jeremy. <clears throat> and um, it's not gotten better. So, all right. So now that means you get to ask me or Donnie a question. I can ask anybody a question. Anyone a question, whatever you want. Whatever it is. Wow. Uh, Donnie, what is your country club handicap? Uh, 13.8 right now. So, is that up or down from where it's been? Uh, it's been climbing upwards. So, um, got it down to a 10 8 last year. Not feeling too confident in seeing that number anytime soon, but you know, it, it comes and goes. Earlier this year, I told Brad I was going to beat him straight up head to head. Still going to do it. The year's long, many opportunities and days, um, but we'll see how that goes. Keep grinding. Keep, keep grinding. grinding. Keep grinding. <laughs> hey, Ben took him down uh, Sunday. Oh, not nice. Oh, well, your dad wouldn't lie on here. Well, let's check his integrity real quick. Around the house, if there was some unhealthy food that you didn't want getting found, is there a secret place that you would hide it and stash it? Uh, behind the vegetables <laughs> in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> it might, there might be some Butterfingers and some Kit Kats there through over at my house. <laughs> Noted. The freezer behind the vegetables. <laughs> the frozen vegetables. The frozen, like, you know, the peas and the frozen uh, corn and stuff like that. You just... Just hide, hide them back there. That's where it, it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Well, you're back up, Ron. Oh, man, I'm back up. You're back up. Um, golly. I'm trying to think. It doesn't have to be golf. It yeah, could be, be anything. anything. Anything related. Yep. Hmm. Bradley, do you think you need a new vehicle? <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what would this new vehicle be? I don't know yet, but I mean, Bradley's always wanted something different. If he gets this, then it, ooh, look at that. He's always, always on to the next one. Mm, huh? So you got an idea then? I mean, maybe. So I'm I'm looking into like full size SUVs, you know, Tahoe, nice. Suburban, Expedition. You see him driving a Suburban or something? I mean, like to work and to the golf course. A suburban, no. But see, I, I, it's one of those things. Like when you see someone in a type of vehicle, they either feel like they fit or they don't. He fits in the truck. Right. Like exactly. I, I feel like he just rolls up in a truck and like you just expect to see him in a truck. Exactly. And then like, you know, you got Max Kelly and his like lesbian mobile. <laughs> they're just rolling around in. <laughs> and it doesn't really fit him. But it's where we're at. So, and, and we have everything in between. No, I mean, so, I mean, Steph loves her small SUV, and so thinking about getting the big SUV for family road trips. Um, golf golf trips. Golf trips. Golf trips. Just all that. I don't need a truck anymore. But that truck was your dream truck. That was a nice truck. It Keyboard is. Was. It was. It is. It's still a great truck. It's not like it's dead. <laughs> yeah. No, it was his dream. <laughs> Don, it was dream. his dream. Now, he, yep. You know what the last time that he talked me into keeping my truck happened? Uh oh. What happened? I blew an engine, spent six thousand dollars, had the engine replaced, then the trans then the catalytic converters went out and yeah, money pit. Mm. Yep. Trade it when Yep. Trade it when it's at the high. Honestly, I got my Jeep I, I used to have, like I liked it, but like last year, perfect storm kind of arose. Someone wanted to pay full price for what I was asking for it. I was like, uh, ah, you know what? Like Yep. It, I probably could have squeezed another year or two out of it at a pretty good clip, but I was like, I kind of saw the writing on the wall, and it's like, all right, yeah. time to upgrade. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Dad. Uh oh. You have to give an answer. You have to. Equal. Favorite child. <laughs> That's Favorite why I said child. equal before. <laughs> he already knew it. I knew it was coming. <laughs> equal. <laughs> uh, you have to say that if you're listening, Tori. Uh, <laughs> it's just what you have to do as a parent. <laughs> We'll cut the, the the visual feed I knew for this. It, I knew He's it was coming. His fingers crossed. I knew it was coming. That's why I said equal before he even asked. <laughs> that puts you back on the spot again, Ron. We pull into a parking lot. 
it's half empty or pretty empty. What's going through your head? <laughs> must not be good. I mean, what, 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 what restaurant we're at must not be that good. Uh, no, you're not catching on. I'm not catching on. Pull into a parking lot, half empty. Mm -hmm. Plenty of space. It's just a pig from. Oh, quit. <laughs> <laughs> quit. <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> hey, choosing a parking place is a difficult thing for some people. <laughs> That's hard. For man. you? Explain. Yeah, I mean, there's clearly a story here. I have a tendency to, you know, start to go into one parking spot and then see another one go, oh, oh, oh. And then all of a sudden I change, turn around and I'll change and go to a totally different one. Uh, that's true. That's maybe true. So if you pull in the, if he pulls in the parking lot that's full or whatever, he's first one available, or whatever. But if there's plenty of spaces, he oh, has yeah. a very hard time like selecting which perfect space yes. is left open. Selecting which yeah. one that so he'll start to turn into one. No, 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 go to this one. Ah, no, 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 no. You know, okay. you gotta find the optimal parking angle then coming out to your car, being able to locate it, not getting hit by a straight buggy. Nope. There's, there's a lot to consider here, Ron. Okay. I understand. So uh, my turn on. Uh, so Bradley, what do you remember of your um, rehearsal dinner? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> and this will be a good one. In the end. Oh my God! <sighs> yeah, we're waiting. I know. So I mean, obviously, he's going to tell the story. Um, I will say that I had a bunch to drink, so we had that rehearsal dinner. Started with beer. That Maker's Mark we talked about. Mm -hmm. Solid. 30, 40 drinks on the night. Mm. And uh, there's a point I don't remember what happened next, but. But Ron does. <laughs> yeah. Ron, what happened over here? Well, I, I remember one thing. I remember he got in a golf cart, and we had uh, my um, brother in law was in town with his RV. He had it parked over there near the garage, and then there was a car right there. And there was make up a space, you know, you know, five feet, mm -hmm. you know, you know, spread or whatever. Bradley came through in a golf court, in a golf cart, just flying at full speed, and he just splits it. I mean, it was maybe four feet, you know, and the cart's probably three feet, ten inches, yeah, you know. Yeah, like he had like an <laughs> inch on each side at full speed. He just flies through there and parks it into the garage, which he's so lucky he didn't hit. Either a car or, or an RV or anything like that. Or someone. Who, who let me drive? I don't know. But he uh, proceeded to end up, uh, go up to his room. And uh, you were went up to your room. And, of course, you know, me being the concerned dad and, and the good dad that I am, I went up there and checked on him to make sure he was okay. And when I opened his bedroom door, right no, in there. The bedroom door was locked. The bedroom door was locked, and I got in there. You broke into my room. I had to check and see if you were okay. I mean, you were pretty out of it. So when I, when I break in there and you open up the door, he's laying there butt naked, <laughs> spread eagle on the bed. He's just laying there. Oh, it was a horrible sight. No, no father should ever have to live through that. Uh, but he, he was laying there butt naked, and just laying there like that. I was like, uh, should like I, "All right, uh, should I cover?" Him? No, screw that. No, I, no, I, I, that he's on his own at that point. Yep. It was hot. He was hot. <laughs> yep. And um, yeah, that's that's the last I remember of it. All right, thanks for that story. Yeah, that was a good one. Well, that I mean, hey, I'm, we're not ending Hazard's time on a better story than that. Yeah, um, my dad walking on me, spread eagle, spread eagle, <laughs> on your night before your wedding night, just beautiful. Yeah, everything out, everything he's ever hoped for. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> well, guys, uh, Ron, uh, thanks for coming on tonight. This was a lot of fun uh, getting to do this. I mean, it was kind of cool. Uh, one of the last episodes we recorded had my mom on. It's kind of neat getting to do this with mm -hmm. someone. Um, it's nice that you actually were able to tell an embarrassing story about Brad. We tried to put my mom on the spot, and she, she didn't have anything to say. I story. asked his mom for an embarrassing story, and she couldn't think of one from his entire life, I mean, which I call bullshit. Yeah. Oh, man, I got all kinds of them. Bradley... When he was on Zyrtec when he was little, he would wake up just screaming in the middle of the night and, you know, yelling about SpongeBob SquarePants. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah of course you I mean, don't remember not, that. I couldn't help that. You, yeah, you could. You know, yeah, you just, could. Yeah, you could. Zyrtec allergy medicine. <laughs> you got to be tougher than that. All kinds of stories from mudding to, uh, you know, you just getting in trouble to. I mean, 
It's not embarrassing. All right, Ron. I guess you're gonna have to come back on. And we'll, we'll have a <laughs> more tell, stories. We'll have a tell all. Yep. Um, I want to come on with Max Kelly. I want to drill Max Kelly on here. Okay. Yeah. So you, your dad has more stories on you, doesn't he? Nah, nah, nothing. I think he does. Nah, I'm gonna bet so. Nah, he say the same thing as my mom. Perfect child, never did anything wrong, straight A's, uh, and until he got to college, then went south from there. But anyways, uh, Ron, thanks again for coming on. Uh, to all of our listeners, thanks for tuning in for another episode. Thanks for supporting, and as always, keep it classy, dudes. <laughs>